Hello everyone! This tutorial goes over PCA using Python. PCA, or otherwise known as Principal Component Analysis, is one of the most commonly used unsupervised learning algorithms. So PCA is inherently a dimensionality reduction algorithm, and we'll go over what that means uh, throughout this tutorial. Okay? So we're going to be going over a PCA for data visualization. Basically, when you have um, higher dimensional data than two or three dimensions um, that you want to reduce to two or three dimensions so you can visualize it, so that you can hopefully understand your data better. Um, when you do any sort of machine learning, um, a lot of times it's nice to understand your data, um, just in general, really. Okay. The second part we'll be going over is PCA to speed up machine learning algorithms. So in a previous tutorial, logistic regression using Python, um, one of the things we briefly, 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 briefly went over was that just by changing one of the parameters um, to logistic regression by changing the solver, i.e. the optimization algorithm, we greatly sped up how long it took to fit our algorithm, how long it took to fit our algorithm, okay? So in this tutorial, we're going to be doing a way, way, way more common way of speeding up our algorithm by using PCA to speed up the fitting of our machine learning algorithm. And that's the second part of this tutorial. And I should note that the code used in this tutorial will be down below, um, as well as this blog post that I'm going through throughout this video. So all you have to do is click on these links and you'll have access to all the code, okay? So I'm using Anaconda in this tutorial. If you need help installing it, I have so many tutorials on this, it's not even funny, okay? And feel free to ask questions on that too, okay? So we're gonna be using the Iris data set to you know, apply PCA for data visualization. So the important thing to note is first, we're loading the iris data set into a pandas data frame. And one thing you'll notice is that this data is four dimensional. We have you know, four features, sepal length, sepal width, um, petal length, petal width, okay? Four features. It's really hard to visualize four dimensional data, okay? So we're gonna use PCA to reduce our four dimensional data into two dimensions so that we can plot and understand our data, okay? And of course, we have our target um, and our target is typically what people use in supervised learning algorithms, um, what they're trying to predict, basically. So one thing I really want you guys to get out of this tutorial is that to use PCA, you need to standardize your data, okay? So PCA is an unsupervised learning algorithm that is affected by scale. Um, most algorithms are going to be affected by scale to some degree. So we're going to be using a standard scaler to help standardize the data set's features, i.e. the pedal length, pedal sepal width, um, pedal length, pedal width, and that's it. Uh, onto unit scale, which means mean of zero and variance of one. Okay. Just to emphasize this point even further, um, Scikit-Learn has a wonderful section on it that goes over the importance of standardizing your data. And this could have a major impact if you ever do machine learning um, with prediction accuracy, as well as you know PCA for data visualization, okay? So, um, what I have over here, and I should note that the code that produced all this stuff um, this is just a Jupyter Notebook, and it's right here. And you'll have the ability to download it, use it, you know, whatever you want, okay? It, I just find this a little bit easier to visualize, um, at least for tutorial purposes. So basically, what this code is doing is separating out the features because you standardize the features, not the target, okay? And the target is just the this column over here called target. Okay. And we're fitting and transforming um, our features 
into unit scale with a mean of zero and a variance of one, okay? So now we do a PCA projection to two dimensions. So what you have to do is you have to import PCA and we're basically making an instance. We're basically saying, um, I want a PCA um, and I want to keep two principal components. Okay, so we make an instance of the PCA class. Okay, and then we're gonna fit and transform our features, and we're gonna get a two dimensional data. Okay, with two principal components, I should say. Okay, and basically, we have something that's four dimensional, and after we apply PCA, we have two dimensions. Okay. So this over here is basically just combining um, these two principal, compo two principal components with the target again so that we have our final data frame, which is basically the two principal components and our target, okay? So the whole point of this exercise was to go from four-dimensional data into something that we could visualize, something we could plot so that hopefully we can understand our data better, okay? So I have some matplotlib code here. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm happy to help, okay? And what you're gonna see in this plot over here is that iris atosa is very different than iris versicolor and iris uh, virginica, okay? So we understood something a little bit more about our data, okay? Um, one thing I really want you guys to, you know, learn about PCA is we went from a four-dimensional space to a two-dimensional space, okay? So anytime you go from a higher dimensional representation, so as you can see here, um, we have four-dimensional data, okay? And then, you know, after running all this code, um, we went down to two-dimensional data, okay? There is some information that's going to be lost, okay? Um, so the way PCA accounts for this, or the way you can think about it, is by a explained vari variance ratio. So these first two principal components take up 95.8% of the variance, or the information, Okay, um, with the first principal component accounting for 72.77% and the second uh, 23 and the remaining two um, with the rest of the variance. Um, one thing to really, you know, note that's important is that if you try to go down to two principal components um, and you're below 85% of the information, um, it may not be the best idea to visualize that as an accurate representation because you lost uh, a lot of your variance or your information uh, when you went from four dimensions or however many dimensions to two dimensions, okay? But since we're above, you know, 85% roughly, um, this is more than a valid way to visualize our data, okay? Um, so next we're gonna go over PCA to speed up our machine learning algorithm, okay? So, Okay, so the just about the most common application of PCA that I know of is for speeding up machine learning algorithms. So the reason why we're not gonna use the iris data set like we used um, up above here is because that's a very, very small data set. The data set is a, like, considered a toy data set, which means it's a, like a data set, you know, just to apply an algorithm. It's very small. Um, so if we use, you know, PCA here and then a machine learning algorithm, um, we wouldn't really see a difference in how long it took to fit our algorithm because it's already so fast um, on the iris data set because it's small. So instead, we're going to use the MINST database of handwritten digits, otherwise known as MINST. Okay. This has 784 features. The iris only had four, as you remember. 
Um, it has 60,000 training examples and a test set of 10,000, okay? Um, what it means by 784 feature columns is that we'll have 28 by 28 images, okay? Um, and inside each one of those columns will just be pixel intensities, okay? So the first thing you have to do, and again, um, all this code will be provided down below. Um, feel free to use it as your own, okay? So the first thing you have to do is get the data set. So we're going to use sklearns fetch ml data to get the mince data set. There's a bunch of different ways to get this data set. This is just the way I chose. Okay. So inside this data set, um, when we download it, um, you'll see that mince.data, these are the images in the data set. It's you know 70,000 total images that are 784 dimensional or 28 by 28 images. Um, by the way, 28 times 28 is 784, okay? And mince.target, these are just the labels um, corresponding to each one of these images above, okay? So what we're gonna do, um, sorry, this is this notebook. Okay, is after we download this data set, we're gonna do the typical um, splitting our data into training and test sets. So typically you split your train set into, or your data set into 80% training and 20% test. Um, in this case, I chose six sevenths of the data to be training because I wanted 60,000 training images um, and 10,000 test images, okay? So this is just SK learns train test split, okay? And one thing I forgot to put over here is that the import train test split, okay? Um, you'll see over here that you have to import it from SK learn model selection, okay? So like before, we have to standardize our data. I mentioned this earlier in the tutorial. Um, so again, we use standard scalar. So one thing you'll start noticing about a lot of machine learning, you know, algorithms, um, you have some sort of process or some sort of pipeline um, where you first, you know, standardize your data, um, then you'll import and apply PCA. So I import PCA and then I make an instance of the model, okay? And the difference um, from before is that when we made an instance of the model, before we had number components equals two. Um, let me just go above so I can show you. We had PCA n components equals two, okay? We basically said um, right off the bat that we wanna go down to two components, okay? In this case, um, what I'm telling SK Learn is that please choose the minimum number of components such that 95% of the variance is retained, okay? Um, so what sklearn is going to do is it has a curve where um, it'll find out what's the minimum number of components such that 95% of the variance is retained, okay? And if you want to find out how many components that is, you can do PCA dot um, n components, okay? And that really amounts to 154 principal components, okay? And again, we're doing this to speed up our machine learning algorithm. Okay, so important thing to note is um, just like with any sort of algorithm um, where you fit your algorithm on the training set, you do the same thing with PCA on your training set. And then once you fit PCA in your training set, you apply that transform to both the training set and the test set, okay? And then from there, it's just like you have a normal um, algorithm from sklearn. You import the model you want to use. Um, in this case, um, from sklearn.linear model, import logistic regression. Um, and let me just do this inside the Jupyter Notebook so you can see. Okay. 
Okay, let me wait till my computer catches up. So I made an instance of the model. I'm fitting PCA on just the training set. Okay. On your computer, it'd probably be faster because right now I'm recording this video, so it's slowing down my computer quite a bit. Okay. And I apply my transform to both the training and test set. Okay. Um, and from here, it's just import whatever model you want to use. I chose logistic regression. Um, other algorithms will actually be a lot better for this case. It's just logistic regression is a very common algorithm. I make an instance of my model. Okay. Um, I am fitting logistic regression. Okay. So when I'm fitting the model, um, it's learning the relationship between the digits and the labels. Okay. So this is really what we're trying to speed up when we do PCA to speed up machine learning algorithms. So because I went down from 784 components um, in the original data to, I think, 95% um, of the variance corresponds to 154 components, this is really what's you know supposed to be sped up by using PCA, OK? So I just got done fitting my algorithm. And then from here, you can measure your model performance, OK? So this blog post goes over the steps. Um, I thought it was a little bit cleaner than just giving you guys Jupyter Notebooks. If you guys like the format, let me know. If you don't, let me know as well, OK? And then one thing I want to note is the timing of fitting logistic regression um, after PCA. So for different number of principal components, uh, kept. Um, if I kept more uh, percent of the variance, if I kept 100% of the variance, um, basically if I'd really been apply PCA, um, it took roughly you know 48.94 seconds on my MacBook with an accuracy of 0.9158, um, and then you know vary and then from there I just kept various percentage of the variance. Okay, so with 85 percent of the variance retained that amounted to 95 principal components and it took 8.85 seconds to train my model okay to fit my model and it really didn't affect the accuracy in this case okay so one thing i want to note is we can also do an inverse transform so we went from 784 components down to 59 okay or 784 dimensions down to 59 dimensions, okay? Um, and to speed up an algorithm. So this entire tutorial up till now, we've gone from higher dimensional data to lower dimensional data. So PCA can also take uh, the lower dimensional data, i.e. the compressed representation of the data, back to an approximation of the original high dimensional data, okay? So after I ran PCA for um, 95% with keeping 95% of the variance, I was able to do an inverse transform to get back to an approximation of the original 784 dimensional data. Okay. Um, if you want to see this code and how it works, I have a link to it over here. Okay. So you can see it's really just, you know, after fitting the transform going from high dimensional data, um, to lower dimensional data, i.e. 154 components. You can also do the inverse transform to get back to an approximation of the original data, okay? And then um, the image I have in this blog post at the top, um, this just is basically just uh, after applying PCA, going down to like, let's say um, 59 components on this rightmost image. Um, I just did an inverse transform um, to get this, to get back to the 28 by 28 image. Okay. So that's really it for this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. And I should note that if you have a good question, um, I might just answer it on this blog post or in the comments down below the YouTube video. And that's it. Um, please subscribe if you want more content. Um, leave feedback if you want, and that's it. Bye.